y'all come on in. I'm not even going to April Fool's y'all because uh, I'm not. I'm not. It's prison talk and, uh, I don't feel like we need to be uh, April Fools and shit. I need to let y'all know what's going on in the world. <laughs> so let's get it started. Let's get it started. It's time for the Couch Chronicles. Couch Chronicles. Yeah, there ain't no yeah, there fucking, ain't no limits. fucking limits. 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 Every limits. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday limits. from limits. 8 Central limits. Time. You don't limits. never want to miss a couch. Trust me, it ain't no fucking limits. I said none. I've always wondered how to really say this because y'all know how I am like I'm not gonna be like don't go shoot the man that raped me you raped you because that's what I did you know um I just want you to to handle it the best way that you feel like is good for your your well-being your life and your family you got to think about I didn't think about any of that I was 17 at the time all I could think of was, this motherfucker took something from me. <laughs> I got to get him back. So uh, that's all I could think of. 
Now, I let it consume me. So this is what I will say. Don't allow what someone did to you I don't even know if I can say that. Hold on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, just don't allow it to get you in a fucked up predicament to where it puts you in. If you feel like it's worth going to prison for, by all means. But if you have kids and you have a family to think about, think first. Don't get in a childish way of I'm going to get you back. Because even if the situation was like mine, I can't tell you to go catch a case. I'm sorry, I just can't. I can't tell you, especially after knowing what it's like in prison. I can't tell you, especially after knowing that it still doesn't go away what he did to me. It still doesn't take away anxiety it still doesn't take away nightmares it doesn't none of that it, it didn't do that for me and even though some people when they talk to me they call me their hero like I'm I'm not your hero I'm not and honestly the only reason why I, I wasn't even gonna be my own hero I was like, wait a minute. I thought what I was saying was so dramatic and brought some music on. I was like, oh, wow. Okay. Um, give me a second. Quiet back. Which I think is the other one. Oh, yeah. gonna be my own I wasn't but I couldn't mm. not only could I not let it go what was done to me but I also just I was hurt you know and y'all you know that saying hurt people hurt people well not only was ugh, was I hurt from the situation, but I was hurt because my brother was there. You know, I was hurt because I didn't feel like anybody took it as serious as I did. I didn't feel like anybody thought enough to even scare a motherfucker with a gun. And I was like, if, if nobody can do that for me, I can do that for me because at the end of the day I'm gonna stand up for me and even in my young mind I was like I have to stand up for me I have to if if he it's already been done too many fucking times I'm not gonna let not one motherfucker take advantage of me and I, I just lost it I was like fuck that Prison, here I come. And I'm not gonna lie, I was I knew I was going to prison. But I didn't know how long it would be before I got caught because I thought that the victim died. I'm not gonna lie, I thought he died. I was actually hoping that he died. Not gonna lie. I'm not gonna sit up here sugarcoat nothing. I was watching the news. But the, let me tell you something that the news is going to do. They not going to make you feel comfortable at all. They going to do everything they can. Matter of fact, no, they going to make you feel comfortable. I'm so sorry. I take that back. They're going to make you, because they made me think that he was gone. They said he was dead. So the next day I was carrying, I'm not going to lie. I was carrying on life like nothing happened. Call me a psycho if you want to. I don't give a fuck. But all I could think was, this man violated me? 
I took this bitch ass nigga out the game. That's all I was thinking. And then when the motherfucking pop, first of all, this is how I knew I was going down. Um, so when I caught my case, I had a co-defendant. Now, y'all know this, well, the ones that don't know the story. My co-defendant snitched on me. Okay, boom. Pause. Because I don't even think I went this deep with y'all. When I caught my case, it wasn't just me and my co-defendant. We're the only ones that caught a case. That's fine. His his name was the only one that was on my paperwork in the beginning. But his best friend was with us that night. And I don't give a fuck. I can talk about it now. I did my time. I did my nine years. I discharged. They cannot pick me up for anything that I'm about to say. What's done is done. So, boom. One, I sat on this for months. I was raped in June. I found the man in September. Hey, love. And um, instead of, but I didn't, I didn't know exactly where he was, though. I just knew that I know what the man's face looked like that raped me. I know that part. So when I see him, I don't know what he looked like is what I thought. That's what I thought. And I seen him in the store. Okay, rewind. Now, before that, I seen him once before. And right after I was raped, I, I was telling my friend, I said, listen, I don't know what I'm going to do if I see this man. Like, I don't know how I will react. Like, I don't know. And I didn't. I didn't. I honestly... I honestly can't say that I knew what I was going to do when I seen the man that raped me. I, I, but I, I said, you know what? I'm going to avoid bumping into him because, because I don't know. So, which I might even have to start over the fucking uh, YouTube again. What up, Jimmy? <laughs> all right if you're watching on youtube let me know if the sound disappeared because last week somebody called me and i didn't realize until after the podcast was over that the sound was gone which it doesn't matter because i can always upload it but back to the story okay so i told my friend thank you exactly so i told my friend i said listen i don't know what i'm gonna do if i see this man so i i I prolonged it before I even picked up my clothes from, I, I literally had nothing. They was all in, in, in the apartment that I was staying at. But that apartment was around the same area that I was raped. So I was like, I can't go back to that apartment until I'm ready. I'm fit, like mentally, like I literally couldn't even, wake up without <laughs> like I literally was every day I woke up I was crying because I couldn't believe it I was like what the fuck like what like hold on I couldn't wrap my mind around this happening and I put myself in that position to get raped and I say that because I didn't have to listen to my brother my brother begged me to go out with this guy and the one time I did I allowed this guy cause I was a fucking idiot back then and I wanted to be like my brother I allowed him to feed me some bullshit and I didn't know I was hungry I was eating it and he told me you know your brother does coke all the time and I was like what like, damn, he didn't tell me, like, I could have tried it with him, and I, this is what I was thinking in my head. I allowed him to talk me into doing drugs. Never again in my life have I ever allowed anybody to talk me into anything. Because that changed my life. 
it changed my life, you know? So fast forward, I finally was able to get the courage to go get all my clothes and my stuff from my friend's apartment. And when I get there, she's telling me that he's on his way. So immediately I'm thinking, okay, is this motherfucker setting me up? What do you mean he's on his way? Like, how does he even know I'm over here? And she was like, well, you know, he keeps his pills in here. I said, what you mean? She was like, you know, he, he gives me free pills and he pays me to keep his pills in my apartment. And I was like, pass me a knife, you know, put it in on top of the couch. That way, if he does come while I'm still trying to pack my shit up, I, I have protection. That's, I just, I just knew I, I wanted protection because even though I didn't think that he would try to rape me again in front of other people, I, I don't know. I just, I, I felt like I wanted to be protected. I didn't feel safe around him anymore, at which I don't even know why I allowed my 17 year old mind to be comfortable around a grown ass fucking man. Okay. So, I'm almost finished packing my stuff up, and the door opens. It doesn't even regular open. It busts the fucker open. And he comes in like, <laughs> like, grabbing his fucking dick. I, let me tell you something. That I immediately wanted to start stabbing him, but I was like, you know what? I said, you need to, I, I kept my composure and I said, you need to get the fuck up out of here until I leave. And he, he was with his friend and he was making fun of me. He was like, why? Cause you can't take having this dick around you no more. Like, like making it like I wanted him. Ooh, Ooh I just knew, listen. I was not trying to get emotional, but um, he was making it like I wanted him. And um, I just blew up. I remember blowing up. I was like, like, motherfucker, like, you kidding me? And I'm telling his friend, like, the nerve of you to be hanging out with this motherfucker. And he raped me. And he was like, his friend was like, oh, shit. He was like, what? He was like, I got daughters. He was like, and he's talking about, man, I ain't rape her. She wanted it. She came over to my place and y'all, I, and I didn't grab the knife just then. I took off. I took off on him. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, I see I have a viewer right now. If you're watching on YouTube, let me know if you can hear. If you can't, let me know now. But um, I took off on him like I can beat the world up. Like, his name is Sherrod Darton. Yes, he's in Louisiana from Louisiana. Mm -hmm. You can look him up. Sherrod Darton. You can look him up. He used to have, they used to have a, oh, I'm fast forwarding. Let me stop, let me stop. But listen. So we fighting, and I'm literally fighting like, like my life depends on it. My friend, um, which... I'll just tell y'all, the friend of mine, she was older than me too. But the reason why she was my friend is because she was my brother's girlfriend. But my girlfriend, my brother, my brother's girlfriend, I stayed with her because he stayed with his wife. Rest in peace. So... Her best friend was there. Her best friend's name was Sarah. Her name was Ashley. So me, Ashley, Sarah, and my co-defendant was there. But he didn't jump in nothing. Mind you, we are going blow for blow with this grown-ass fucking man. I, it seemed like we was fighting him for a fucking hour. I'm not going to lie. I remember grabbing cookie jars, smashing it against his face. I'm talking about... When he punched me and I fell out, Ashley was on his ass. When he punched her and she fell out, Sarah was on his ass. Like, we was 
literally like attacking this motherfucker like like he raped all of us which i didn't find out till after i went to prison that he raped more women than me and i think ashley was one of the women but she never told me so i don't know so <sighs> man this is crazy you know honestly i i didn't really think talking about it would make me this uh i feel anxious i feel nervous for some reason and so anyway, so we was fighting and even his homeboy was trying to grab him out. When I say it looked like a rainbow of pills was flying everywhere and y'all know ecstasy pills is colorful. I'm talking about they was everywhere. I'm talking about stuck on foreheads, on kneecaps. I'm not kidding. But all I could think of is he gotta go. He gotta go. This is where I laid my fucking head. You already did what you did. But you're not gonna come where I laid my motherfucking head. And how? who knows how long you've been fucking selling pills in this bitch. I don't even give a fuck. But you're not gonna be here when I'm here. And so, um, Everybody in that apartment complex, they loved me. I didn't go by Pretty Eyes, and I didn't go by Janelle. I went by Honey Nut back then. And, um... Oh. Oh. Okay, so... The fight ends up out the apartment onto the balcony, and by this time, I got my knife. And we are still going blow for blow with this. I'm talking about all of us is bleeding... Nobody gives a fuck. Everybody's still fighting for their life. The women on this one nigga. And the other niggas is just looking. I don't remember. Only person that I remember even doing anything was his homeboy was trying to grab him out. Like, fight him to come out the apartment. He's the one that actually brought him out the apartment. Sharad grabbed me and tried to throw me over the balcony. You know what? what helped me? Get my, I promise you, I kid you fucking not. Everybody in that apartment complex was like, Honey Nut, Honey Nut, you fucking got this. They didn't know the situation, they just seen me fighting. That's it. And they know I, I, I wasn't into nothing. Like, I literally went to work, went to school, and then came to the apartment. I didn't, only reason why they knew me is because, like, when I would see people, like, hey, how you doing? You need help with that? Like, I was that person growing up, like, I was mean, but I was nice in the same, because I was hurting. I was hurting. I wasn't the nicest person back then. I was hurting. And so, um, I picked up, like, I just got all the strength that I could, and I, I just, just started swinging my arm until I was able to raise up and I felt something like 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 I latched on to something and I was able to like pull myself up well what I latched on to the knife was sticking out the middle of his head that was the first time look he even stabbed me back right there that was the very very first time that I seen him after he raped me. And I didn't think I would ever see him again. Honestly, I was thinking I was going to go to jail then. I didn't. I kept looking on the news thinking that they was going to mention my name or, or say something about the scene or it never popped up, never showed up. The guy that was his friend that had came with him, he he drove back, and um, because I was I was still there, like, cause I was thinking I was gonna get arrested. I was like, I don't want them to chase me. Come get me, motherfucker. So, cause I was really thinking that they was coming. So his friend came back and he was like, um, I just want to sincerely apologize to you, and um, I will never fuck with him again. He said, I I swear I don't even remember this guy's name. I remember what he looked like though, but he was like, um, my name is such and such. He was like, I got daughters, and if they ever said anything like this, it it would be a war. 
And when he said that, I was, I immediately was like, in my head, I was like, my brother got me. My brother got my back. This man right here just said he would go to war behind his daughter. My family? They got me. Right? That's what I was thinking. So, he was telling me that uh, he dropped him off at the hospital with his baby mom. All of this shit. And he told me to go back wherever I was staying. Don't come back around. Um, just to be safe. Um, I grabbed up every pill that I found on the floor, which was like 120 of them. Took them with me, too. Um, that was probably the first time I did ecstasy, actually. Um, yeah, I think it was the first time. I think. I'm not sure. But I took them, and I sold all but three, because I took three myself. Anyway. That was in, like, July. He raped me in June. I, I seen him in July, and that happened. I didn't see him again till September. But he looked different. So when I was in the store, my body told me that he was there before. It was like goosebumps. It was like, like literally, my body was just like, like, I, it felt a chill. I was like. And I'm looking, like, what the fuck? Like, why am I feeling like the dead just walked on me? I couldn't figure it out until I looked over, like, where the chips was. I was at Quick Trip. And I see this motherfucker. And all I could think was, follow him. That made my heart jump just now. That's all I could think, though, was follow him. Follow him. And I did. For three weeks. I don't know. You know, I used to tell myself I followed him for that long to double make sure that it was him. But really, between us, my couch potatoes, I really was trying to talk myself out of it because even though I didn't know anybody that had went to prison or knew anything really about it except for what was on TV, the thought of just like being in something that was like juvenile, because I had been in juvenile, it just like, it irked me, but I was just like, eh. So, you know... Within them three weeks, I was going back and forth with myself, which, and I know some people might say, psychos do this. Cool. But I was just going back and forth with myself, like, should I do this? Like, what What did your brother do? Did your brother, should I, just wait. He gonna handle it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just wait on the sign. And I was like, nah, I'm tripping, I'm tripping. I don't need no sign. I'm gonna just do it. So as I'm psyching myself out to shoot this man, I'm also psyching my people's, my, my co-defendant out like, yo, shit, we gonna go rob this mother. I was just giving him like, a, like trying to psych myself into like, okay, like, this is what we gonna do. I'm not just gonna get, I'm gonna shoot this motherfucker and I'm gonna take him for everything that he got. That's what, now I said this out my mouth. Doing it is a whole nother thing. But they still charged me with whatever my co-defendant said out of his mouth. They didn't have no physical evidence. Nothing was missing. But they charged me with burglary, armed robbery, and grand larceny. You hear me? So, within them three weeks, I was talking to myself like, okay, now... I understand that this man violated you, but you 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 told who you needed to tell. Let them handle the situation. <sighs> About two weeks into following him, I was like, you know what? Whatever they gonna do is taking too motherfucking long. He's breathing too long for me. I know that sounds crazy to y'all. 
But that's what it was to me. I was like, he's breathing too long. Why is he here? <laughs> when are they going to do something about it? So when we get violated, no matter what the situation is, whether it's rape, whether it's being stolen from, whether it's being mugged, we our immediate thoughts, whether we go through with it or not, is this motherfucker got a gap. They got to get dealt with. Seriously. I know I'm not the only one that thinks like that. Well, my train of thought has changed drastically. But back then, it was, you violated, you got to go. That's what it was. Now with my grown mind, I don't, that's why I'm saying I couldn't tell you to go shoot the man that raped you too. I wouldn't tell you that. So <sighs> within two weeks, I was just like, okay, should I call and be like, like, what should, how should I handle this? Like, so I'm just waiting on my brother to call me like, yo, did, but mind you, in the meantime, in between time, I was still following him. Because I was just like, shit. I don't know what I was hoping to expect. I was just like, I'm just gonna keep following him, maybe. He might be like, well, where is he at? I'm gonna be like, oh, well, he at. Da -da 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 -da. Like the movies. Like, I know your every step and move. So, at, when the third week came, I don't know what made me tell my co defendant to, man, tell your homeboy, I said, y'all trying to go make this money, let's go. So I'm getting them on some let's make this money type shit. But in my head, I'm like, the motherfucker raped me. He got to go. Whatever they take after that, I don't give a fuck. I'll be satisfied once I get my guy, basically. So they on some movie type shit. Like, I need some bandanas. I was, if, I was like, I'm not covering my face because it's not that I want to get caught, but I want you to know that I'm the one that's doing this to you. Not no motherfucker trying to, to get their money back, trying to, trying to rob you for your drugs. You know you raped me. I am here to collect. And so, I chose not to wear a bandana, which, of course, got me identified faster. And, of course, people would call me a stupid criminal. I didn't give a fuck, though. That's not, that wasn't the point to me. And as a tourist, I had to grow out of this about making a point no matter what it cost me. And I had to grow out of that. I had to. It took prison for me to grow out of that too. I had to. Because when you grow, when you when you step in that mind, you don't give a fuck about the I don't give a fuck if you say that you in love with somebody. You don't even give a fuck about that. Because it's about how you feel first. And that's a selfish way of thinking. So that's, again, bringing me back to saying that I'm not saying that I'm proud of doing my time, but I did my time and I discharged and I owe them nothing else. And I did what I did because I felt like I had to stand up for myself. So they get their bandanas on. And I'm like, shit, at this point, I don't even have a car anymore. Ooh, what car are we about to go steal? Okay, let's hop box this car. I mean, let's, 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 let's grab this car and let's take it back to the south side. So we steal a car. Drive to the south side. And the whole time I'm driving there, even knowing I got this sawed off shotgun, I was like, and even talking out loud, like, yo, we, nigga, we about to go fuck this nigga up. 
even doing all of that, I still was in my head like, give me a sign to not do this. Like, what is my sign to not go through with this? If I get there and my brother's handling the business. Okay, okay, I'll be good with that. So, let me just circle the lot real quick. We finally get to the apartment. I'm circling the lot. I know where this man's apartment is because I've been following him for three weeks. So, I'm driving. I hit the corner. I look up. Ooh, and my heart just dropped again like it just happened again. Because when I say that my heart possibly fell out my asshole that day, I'm not kidding. I kid you not. Because if y'all just now tuning in, it's the Couch Chronicles and it ain't no fucking way. I do this every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 8 Central Time. Follow Couch Chronicles No Limits on Spotify, Pandora, THA Couch on Facebook, TikTok, and Big O. Couch Chronicles Dot No Limits on Instagram and my main YouTube Instagram and my dot com, which is T-H-A, real J-A-N-E-L-L. For those that don't really know me, know me. When I get nervous, I smile because I don't be wanting to cry. So I'm going to play a song. And I'll tell y'all who was up there after these messages. Let's play our theme song. Big time, giving up them years. They tell me straight off the front line, I'm not lying. I'm watching my mama cry up in that courtroom. And the judge just dismissed me like I was dumb too. And the bailiff looked at me like, what you gon' do? My mind is fucked up, so all I'm thinking is I'm gon' shoot. And reality set in like it was supposed to. Cat calls down the hall, guess what them folks do? Brown bag, bologna sandwich, and them jumpsuits. My cellmate just did a hundred years on some dumb shit. Damn. Is this the end of the day? Cause living in the cell is just like being in a grave. If ain't no money on your books, then you ain't eating shit. You better pray that you can mail a penitentiary gift. For them lonely days, a visitation list. From your family and your friends, that's a major lift. And your spirit, all the drama on the yard, you wanna forget it. Yeah, yeah. Behind these walls is different, and you wouldn't understand if you didn't live it. Ay, big slime, I did big time, ay, and they took me off the front line. I'm still scarred from doing my time, and everybody said I should let go. I'm trying, but it is something to my mental, and I got the pain, you know, I stand ten toes. You know, now you know, I hold on. And I know I gotta think different Cause if I don't, then I guess I'll be the same nigga Wait, I'm trying to let it go I'm trying to be a better person So I don't have to get physical I gotta get my mind right for the limelight I don't care who's judging if they don't know doing time I'm trying to be an example To my fans and all my peoples and my nieces and my nephews Big time, I did big time Sitting in the cold cell in the daytime Your time be fine, but It's not like the world, no Big time, I did big time Giving up them years, they took me straight off the front line I'm not lying, I'm watching my mama cry up in that courtroom Then the judges dismissed me like I was dumb too Then the bailiff looked at me like, what you gon' do? My mind is fucked up, so all I'm thinking is I'm gon' shoot Damn it's just the end of the day Cause swimming in the cell is just like being in the grave I swear to that song do something to me every time And it's I know y'all probably like That's you though I know And I don't know If it sounds conceited But it's like I didn't write it It's like It's like it's not even me like, I didn't make that song for me. I made that song for all of us. 
because I know I know y'all get it. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all understand anybody who's done time. I know y'all get it. So my heart exited my asshole. I kid you not. I looked up on the balcony and I seen my brother. Not with a gun, <laughs> with a beer and a smile on his face. And I was just thinking like, all this time, like, did I just so happen to miss you already hanging out with this motherfucker? Like, and I'm trying to rack <laughs> my mind. So I called his girlfriend on the phone and I told her to call him on three-way because I wanted to see what he looked like when he lied. <laughs> I know that sounds fucked up. That sounds fucked up, don't it? Yeah. But Sometimes when people lie to me, I just, I let them. Like, I don't, I know what you look like when you lie. And that's how I know when I can believe you. It's when I can look into your face and know when you're not lying. Because I know what your lying face look like. And I know what your face look like when you trying to convince you know and I learned that before prison I learned how to just how to read people and if you don't know how to read people the way you gonna learn is studying the book I couldn't understand how I let that slip by though. It, it, I've been following this man for three weeks. And you at his apartment drinking a beer? Y'all had enough time to get a six pack? He shared the, my, my brother shared the post. So hopefully he tunes in. And this might be the first day that he knows that I know. Because he don't even know that I know. So, but I speak freely on my podcast. I don't give a fuck. I speak freely. I speak my truth. Like, it is what it is. I have to heal. And holding it in all this time didn't help me heal. Having a couch is the most I've healed in my whole entire fucking life. I've been alive as long as Jesus was, okay? I ain't lying. And literally, the couch... And of course, my wife is literally been the most help. Holding it in was making me like miserable. It was making me not like myself. It was making me mean to the people around me. Because I couldn't, I didn't, I, I wanted to talk. I got a lot to say. And every time, everywhere I go, it was like everyone was trying to fucking silence me. And I allowed it. I was like, I'm not good at explaining myself or things. You know what taught me? The couch. I used to be no good at explaining anything. I'm not kidding. Some of y'all probably like, you still don't. But listen, I come a long way because it used to be times where people used to be like, oh, what was that uh, TV show about? Or what was that movie about? I used to be like, you're going to have to watch it yourself. <laughs> I can't tell you because I don't, I don't remember. I don't know how to tell you, actually. 
I had to grow, you know? I'm thankful. I'm thankful to be able to do prison talk and just, because I'm telling you when I say that they literally wouldn't even allow me to say that I even went to jail or juvenile, let alone. I wasn't allowed to talk about that. And that's why I spent half my life. I wasn't allowed to talk about it. And it, it, it made me seem weird. Because then I don't know what to talk about. The fuck? I just got out. So excuse me for being in the studio with you and not knowing exactly what the fuck you're talking about. I'm just learning. <laughs> People used to think I was so conceited because I would never say anything. Well, I was told I can't talk about prison, so what the fuck else is there to say? <laughs> Thank you. I love you too, Bishop. I didn't know what to say. I just had somebody text me the other day and they told me, you know, back then I wasn't even able to speak to you because I was a nobody. I'm like, <laughs> it literally was not that. How can I talk if I can't relate? You know, and the things that I've went through now, being out in the world, I had to experience. I couldn't just come out and be like, oh yeah, and start a podcast and be talking about what's going on in the world. I haven't even experienced it. Like, I went in when Black Planet was still out. So, excuse me that I didn't know anything and I didn't know how to talk to people. I didn't know how to be a human. Just keeping it real. I didn't. And prison will do that. And even though when I was in prison, I didn't feel like I was institutionalized because I seen institutionalized and I wasn't that. But now that I'm out, now that I've been out, I'll tell you one thing. I've been a little institutionalized. <laughs> And to this day, right now, I'm still a little institutionalized. I will mop the floor with a pad. I'll make a spring. If I still drunk, I would make some hooch. You feel me? Like, And I know it sounds crazy. I still put my makeup in plastic baggies sometimes. And when I catch myself, it's already done. I done already broke up the damn case it came in, crushed it up, chopped it down real smooth. <laughs> Tied the knot a little and slid it to the side. Like I was about to go sell the motherfucker. I am still a little institutionalized. And even when I was in prison, I was like, I would never be. You kidding me? You think I'm, I would never be that. Look at me now. <laughs> yes, exactly. You said same thing they did to the slaves. It's going to take time. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm able to utilize a whole week of prison talk. I don't have to talk about nothing but prison. That's it. And I allow that for anybody that's ever done time because people think we're weird when we talk about prison all the time. You know, they think that we're just like glorifying it. And it's not that we're glorifying it. It's that some of us spend half of our lives in prison. Some of us learn certain ways of life in prison. Some of us had our most traumatic and best moments in prison. Some of us was raised by the prison, the people in it and around it. 
so to think that we just gonna be out and be good all the time if you are I am I'm not kidding like if my bell didn't get broke I would have been like ba bang 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 boom 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 bang you hear me I'm not kidding I'm not kidding like my hats off like flowers I commend those that are perfect But not everybody is. Some of us still break down in the shower. Some of us still break down on the live. I'm sorry. It's... And guess what? There's some people that went to jail and never made it to prison. And guess what? They still have nightmares about a traumatic experience is a traumatic experience. You can't think for one second. <laughs> I love you too, YG. You can't for one second think that you are gonna do time and come out and be like, hello everyone, how are ya? And know everything. No, you're not gonna be like that. I couldn't even open my door. <laughs> I was like, hold on. Close me in. <laughs> Can you close my door behind you? Oh, you don't want to come get to know me? Uh, call me. Can you text my boss? Yeah, I know that. Look, I couldn't, I didn't know how to just sit and converse. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I couldn't talk to my family for shit. And you know what? I wrote this down. I said, relationships change even when you keep in touch with your people locked up because you can never show your true feelings or express it either through a phone or through a letter. Not even in visitation. The best you can do to keep a relationship even with family alive is be understanding. Understanding that we are not the same. We're not. Especially when we get out we're not the same as when we went in. I'm not that same 17 year old. Even before then, I wasn't even the same when I went into DHS and had to go through all of that bullshit. I wasn't the same then. And I'm especially not the same now. I'm not the same now. And I don't expect anyone to be not in any traumatic situation whether it was being being manipulated can take you through a traumatic situation no matter what the situation is don't think that we're over it even if we're smiling because guess what you know another thing that and my hats are off to the ones that have an amazing job and you have amazing benefits and amazing everything when it comes to working and you you really don't even have to work if you don't want to I commend you I swear I'm not a jealous bone in my body when it comes to that for real like I commend y'all but for the ones that even if they don't tell you that you being a felon is holding you back, if you're not a CEO of, if you don't have your own business right now and you don't have that perfect job to where you like, shit, I can go on vacation right now, you're still struggling. To get to the top, they still looking at you like you still that prisoner. They may not say it, they may never even bring it up. But if they read your file and you notice that you're not excelling and you're not making the money that you think that, that you feel like you deserve to be making,
Shout out to the ones that got that job. Shout out to the ones that's working their dream job. But to the ones that's still struggling and still going through it and still like trying to fight your way past the word felon. And for the ones that can get your record expunged, I know you guys say, never say never. Never say can't. Well, some people really can't. You know, and um, some people don't want to go through a church just to get something done. I personally don't. That's the only reason why I'm not in the prisons right now um, with the couch. Because I had an opportunity to go in through the church. But it's the Couch Chronicles where it ain't no fucking link. <laughs> what church is going to say that? Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm not making fun of it. I'm just kidding, y'all. I'm just kidding. It's the Couch Chronicles where it ain't no fucking link. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not. Okay. I'm just saying. I wasn't going to go in and try to censor myself when I don't censor myself out here. Unless it was like a child that I'm doing an interview with, I'm just not going to censor myself because the world is not censored it's only censored because you guys have the child lock on the child proof on <laughs> once you take that veil off and your third eye is open nothing is censored everything is i'm telling you like <laughs> i'm not kidding y'all just now waking up to what's going on Oh, did he this, did he that? Some people have been woke. Some people have been peeping what's going on in the industry. I get made fun of because I never took a deal. Some people think I've never even been offered a deal. I've been offered a deal by, I'm talking about big name companies. No kidding. I'm talking about, I used to sit in a studio with big celebrities. But I don't, it's not, I'm not saying that to brag at all. I'm just saying that to say that I don't care about none of that shit. None of that means anything to me. When I feel like I'm in a situation that made me feel like I'm in prison again, to me, that's going with a label. That's prison to me. And I've seen that even before I knew anything about the music game. So I'm sticking to that. You don't have to have a deal to be successful. It might not start off the way you want it, but guess what? It's gonna progress. Just keep being consistent. It's prison talk this whole week on the couch. If you're comfortable sharing your story, you are more than welcome to come sit on the couch. I love y'all so much. Shout out to all my couch potatoes that stay tuned in. Thank y'all for bringing me your energy because when I say I'm in a lot of pain, <laughs> I love y'all and I need y'all energy. I love you, YG. It's the Couch Chronicles and it ain't no fucking limits. I will see y'all tomorrow on the couch. Y'all yeah. gonna be here tomorrow? I hope so. And if you got your car out, it's gonna be tennis ball size hell. Put your cars up. Wifey, come on home. It's the Couch Chronicles and it ain't no fucking limits. I love y'all. Have a beautiful night. And stay safe. Yeah. Love you, YG. Love you, big girl. Thank you so much for listening to my story. Spotify, Pandora, thank you so much for tuning in. It's the Couch Chronicles and it ain't no fucking limits.